This is One on One. We are joined by Virginia Rich, who is a professor, Division of Business at Caldwell College. Good to have you with us. Thanks. It's good to be here. We've had some wonderful people over at uh, from Caldwell with us. Um, I want to talk about uh, your approach to teaching. Uh, what is a flipped classroom? I, I love that term simply because the uh, I'm sure you've heard the expression "everything old is new again." Yes. A flipped classroom isn't really anything new and different. It's just a way of getting students to engage with the material right. before they come to class. So we have some wonderful technology tools that will help us, the students, to get engaged um, before they get here. Things like um, the wonderful Khan Academy and all sorts of other online things that they can use. But it's really anything that you would do as a professor to get the students to plug into the material before they come to class right. so that when they come to class you can do something interesting with it rather than just the traditional lecture. It's so interesting. I, I was thinking about this. We are taping on a Friday. And uh, so I, I, I teach a class at a different institution, at NYU. And I was thinking about the first day, which is tomorrow. And the whole time I've been thinking about the first day, you've got to get them thinking. Yes. And so I think most students come expecting the first day. You tell them, what are the course requirements? Right. How do they get an A? You know. Right all that stuff. And the whole time I was thinking, I should have sent them a question for them to come in thinking about reading something and read something and come in prepared to talk about such and such. That's a great idea. Is that it? Absolutely. Is that what you're talking about? Absolutely, because I think in order for students to get... By the way, I didn't do that. I should have done that, but go ahead. <laughs> next time. <laughs> yes. There's always next semester. Exactly. Uh, the, one of the things that we absolutely have to do as teachers is we have to help the students see why this is relevant. And I think that the students are no different than you and, you and I. If we are in a situation where we have to sit through a talk, if there's nothing in it for us, then we can't help it. We're going to be pulling out our cell phones and checking right. our email. Is the and operative all sorry for interrupting. Is the operative word to engage them? Engage, but you have to engage with relevance. There has whoa, whoa, to be engage a Engage with relevance. You have, you have to get the students to see what is in it for me. Why do I need to take this course? How is this course going to help me ultimately in whatever it is that I'm doing? Even if it's not today or tomorrow, it might be at some time in the future. Something that makes it worth their time to learn, to go through all the effort to learn. And if we can get that relevance, if we can engage them, then we have the possibility of having a really active learning experience. And, but, but how is digital technology, how is communication, the internet, et cetera, et cetera, um, and so-called, Jackie, what are we calling it, the, the, um, the smart board? How are smart boards helping us do that as academics in ways that were not so easy to do before? I think one of the things it does is it makes it easy to be interactive. So, so? one of the things that I, I really enjoy doing is um, I have the students. Is that what we're looking at right now? Take a look at, you can look right, oh, pop that up there, Kip, if That's you could. one of the tools that I, that's a lot of fun to work with. Our whiteboard is not so, our smart board is not so smart there, so you have to look <laughs> at it right there. So what is that, what's happening right there? Okay, in the, that's using one of the rooms where we have what's called an aquas board, and one of our- A what? An aquas board. Okay. <laughs> it, it sounds like something that's underwater. Yeah, right. But it's uh, what some of our uh, people call the, uh, white, the uh, smart board on steroids. So you're basically able to take your desktop computer- Got it. And blow it up into something really big and then make it entirely a touch screen. And even more fun, you can pick up what looks like a marker, of course it's not, and you can actually draw on a website. So you can draw and it's great because then it, you can um, save that, whatever it is that you drew, and send it off to the students. You can do an, any one of a number of things with it. What I really like about it is that it helps us reach all the different kinds of learners. Some students are great auditory learners, some are visual, visual learners, learners right. and then most of us are kinesthetic learners. We need to do something with it. Kinesthetic. Kinesthetic. So we have to, it's hands-on learning. Once you do something with that, whatever it is that you're learning about, you really internalize it. But, but here's the thing I keep worrying about, I keep thinking about. My fear is that, and you, I know you're gonna have a good answer for this. My fear is that if we teach 
in this interactive way that is too technologically dependent. Mm -hmm. My fear is that ultimately when we get face to face, and there's no more technology, and you've asked these questions, and they've engaged technologically, digitally, et cetera, et cetera, and now we're face-to-face, -face, no technology, and then we have to talk like this, mm -hmm. that my fear is that so many students, or too many students, that have been so technologically and digitally obsessed that they may not be able to do this. Am I wrong? You're not wrong. Help me. What we have to do is use the technology as tools to get us to, where we, the, to the places where we want the students to learn. So, for example, if I have the students, it's very difficult to get the cell phones out of the students' hands. How do you do that? Do, do you have a mandatory policy, put them away? Absolutely not. No? No, you can't do that because then you have to enforce it. Okay. okay. Better, better yet, put up an interesting question on an internet site and have the students text their responses. Wait a minute, why? But why text their responses? Why not make them communicate? Raise their hands? because then that requires some active courage to say, I agree with this or I agree with that, and they, don't, might, they might not want to give that up in front of their peers. Oh. If they text a response, I know instantly what their, the answer to a poll might be, uh, and nobody has to give up their anonymity. And then when students see that, hey, you know what, there's a lot of support for the same position I'm taking, then they might engage a, and be bold enough to come out there and answer a Devil's question. Devil's advocate. Please. The poll is a yes or no, closed-ended question. I don't mm -hmm. want to get so philosophical here, but here's my concern. Uh, and I, but I think here's where you're going. The poll clears them. It's a clearinghouse, meaning the yes or no will get them in the game. Okay. Do you then further find out who has responded to the poll and then with an open-ended question get them in to hopefully, because I'm trying to ultimately get them to talk. Right. Do you use the clearinghouse? They say yes, they say no, you know who, said, who has said what, and now they want to... I don't know, and quite frankly, I don't really care. I you just don't. want them to be engaged in the process of thinking about the issue. And okay. when they see that other people agree or disagree with them, then they're more plugged in. But the time comes. So that's, that's how we use the text, use okay. texting in the classroom. But the important message also is I have to say to them, there comes a time to put the phone down. You have to engage as a person. How do you, when, when do, you, do you say that's enough? I don't say that's enough, but what I say is I ask, then we have a face-to-face -face discussion, or oh, we do. have a debate, or we have something. And at some point in every class, I always, I don't care what the topic is, I talk about two things. I talk about the importance of being in the moment. And you can't be in the moment if you're texting. You have to be in the moment. That's a very important thing. Human interaction. Human interaction. Non-technologically driven. Yes, non-technologically I, I just, driven. I'm sorry for my obsession about that. It's just... It's so important. Because you can't do this show doing this. No. <laughs> you, know? you can't right. get a do a job interview that way. You, that's right. No one got a job interview through email. That's all. That's and right. I, and, but you're using it all. I Every try to medium. use it all. I try to do anything I can to get the students to engage in whatever it is that we want them to learn. Well, I'll tell you what, you are doing a great job finding, you're meeting them where they are. And trying to then get them to where we want them to be. Man, I'll tell you, That's uh, the Virginia process. Rich, Professor of Division of uh, Business at Caldwell College, you're doing a great job um, and uh, we need to engage them more. Thank you very much for joining us on One on One, we appreciate it. I appreciate, very appreciate being here. Stay Thank Stay with you. us, we'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by New Jersey's Credit Unions, PSE and G, the New Jersey Education Association, Health Republic Insurance of New Jersey, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, and by Celgene Corporation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System.